to work. What's that? Well, I'm sorry, you're busy. <laughs> to get back yeah. behind the gun. It's going to get awful noisy sure. out there. Yeah. Just want to shoot? Go for it, yeah. The front. Okay. Jeff always shoots it. He's found out if he holds, you hold the tripod, don't you? The bipod, you like? Sometimes I usually hold it. Don't um, get that second jolt of that thing hitting the back end. That's a lot nicer than the Minimi. Boy, I tell you, the Minimi really is. It's zipping off almost half again faster. Yeah. And it's hard to keep on target. We have a loaded clip. Do you want to put the uh, clip adapter on? And, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good we, idea. Why don't we show them uh, with you the bipod. Take the film of that? With the bipod collapsed uh, up to the muzzle. Tested and everything, Nora. Why don't get around over here if you want to see how this is done? Go ahead and do it. on this side when he shoots the, okay. the empty Check rounds come out. Point. Just exactly the wrong number of rounds. Exactly.
we figured this out scientifically that gets you just as far away from the target as you ever get is in three shots. If you shot five, you'd be back on again, or four. And you notice that first time you got uh, uh, three shots, uh, two shots, and then one. You really need one that would recycle back to three. Yeah, that's always the danger. You never know whether you're going to get one or three uh, or two or what. Right. Do we need to do any more, you think? You think that's not... Why don't you have Ed shoot the clip uh, freehand with the LMG? Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> I'll do that. Speaking your ear. Pull the bipod up for it. Get, get up there before you load it. We don't want to shoot any. Uh, no, I won't shoot any of this. At least not until tomorrow. <laughs> That is really nice. It can be either an assault rifle or a machine gun. I, I, we, put, I mean, uh, we put the lightweight barrel on this, and they take the stock off, and the thing weighs probably less than that, or no more than the M16. And that's a better rate of fire because you can create your own burst, you know, by just short pulls on the trigger. But I like that run out thing. You know, Jim Sullivan got some patents on that on the. Uh, Singapore gun? The Ultramax, yeah. And where he first saw it and where I first saw it was on the MP44s the Germans had. They ran out the same way. And the first one of those I shot, I said, man, if you got the room to do it, this is the way to do it because it gets rid of all that bouncing and gives you that constant rate of fire. So I don't know how in the hell he's, I never read his patents, but they're probably so damn limited they don't really, don't mean anything. You know, probably tied into something else, but this, Recoil is just about double the distance it needs to actually feed and fire the gun so it can run out on the spring. So if you have a tracer in here, uh, or if you have, uh, and it doesn't have the right port pressure, or if you have hot ammunition, it's self-compensating. Yeah, and as far as rate is concerned and cadence, yeah. but it'll go a different distance. Exactly. So you can't get way out or you won't, uh, you know, it won't, it won't function. But we normally make it recoil about half the distance over the sear. But the interesting thing is, no matter what you do with any lot of ammo or anything, the rate of fire is exactly the same. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. That's right. Well, either way. Chris? I'm going to shoot all the sides. Standing. Just go ahead and, and do your thing, and I'll walk around you. Can we get a standing? Yeah. What's that? And put behind it. Well, I'll walk more, mostly around you. Okay.
couple more rounds. spins around, it's a single barrel, but it spins around on itself and this chamber oscillates in a kind of a heart shaped cam hmm. and it loads on one side while it's firing on the other and around as it keeps on going and we can get in that big round you saw, you can shoot about 2,000 rounds a minute through one barrel with that thing. That's amazing. Is that part, partly because you're not putting the heat in the barrel? No, it's a, it'll burn a barrel real quick, but the fact is that no ejection cycle and having two chambers to feed one barrel and doing, you know, uh, in other words, doubling up on your cycle, you can really cram the ammunition through it. It has about three moving parts, including the uh, firing pin. Hmm. Why did Honeywell go to all metal instead of the plastics? They're just running with the, the plastic. Yeah, but they, they're running in real high pressures and uh, to get the velocities up. So they're really making it tough on the, uh, you know, plastic case. So that's a big reason for doing that. And there are other ones, other reasons too. How much area do you lease here? Well, that whole firing front that you saw, all the way down there and clear out to the lake. So it's quite a few acres that we lease here. And it allows us to, we've got a big caliber range over there and you'll see later all instrumentated and everything for the 75 testing all. We do short range testing here, but over there we can go out to about five or six hundred meters and still catch all the rounds so we don't have to worry about them getting out of the lake. Mm -hmm. And the building can shoot, uh, we got it set up with two test bays and we can shoot at high elevation out of it or low and a real fancy building. Big bunker type arrangement for instrumentation and control, big hydraulic system to run all the gadgets and it's a pretty nice arrangement. It's got to be a unique facility I think. Uh, it's the only privately owned full proving ground around that I know of. I don't know of anybody else that has one. Not in this country or any other. Uh, no. Everybody borrows a military facility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ready? Okay.